Hey developers, welcome to video 3 of our iTunes search program using Nux.js, Vutify, Axios, and Vuex. So last time I left you guys, we had created this input. If we put anything in here, it's being sent to this route called results, and we it has a dynamic route that has an ID attached to it, which is a param. So we can see here, hello from results route Taylor Swift. So it doesn't do anything else, but we can at least know that we can pass stuff from one route to the other. So now today we are going to take the next steps. We're going to look at how we can use middleware and how we can interact with the application on the server side. And then we're going to look at how we can use it with Vuex. So buckle up. We're going to look at it right now. So let's go ahead and create our middleware. So we're going to create a new one. I'm going to do a new file here. I'm going to call it search. Dot js and inside that search.js we're going to we're going to create an export default function and inside that function we're going to have a context and inside that context we're going to do stuff with it now if you don't realize if you look at the official documentation and let me go back here so i have something called context and this context is the first argument that you give to it and it has a bunch of keys to it. So we have context route, we have context store, so we can access the Vuex store, which is awesome. And we have access to the params query. So let's just play around with params for a second. So we know that params, can't really see here, but it's the client service, it's alias of route.params. So let's see if we can use that. So if you look at our app, we know that we're passing a params here. So let's do this. We can do context.params, and we know the params name we made is ID, and we'll have that equal changed. So if we change that, now one other thing we need to do so that it's available inside our pages is each page, um, we can have our middleware affect the whole application, and we can do that by adding it to the nuxconfig.js file, or we can actually have it set to each individual page. Now, to do that, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is inside our pages, and by the way, we can, uh, this is just like a normal Vue.js component. We can export default. We have to obviously surround it by a script tag. So we'll surround it by a script. We'll close the script. And then we call something called middleware. And then we put the name of the middleware we want to use. So in this case, we're going to use search. And we save it. So now that we're using search, and by the way, this is all in the official documentation. It tells you exactly how to do this here. It tells you on, on the pages that you can use this called middleware. So if we go back to here, and we go to directory structure, and well, actually, if we go to views, you can see you can supercharge your page and you have access to something called async and middleware. So this is this middleware. So these are like special options that you only have available in pages. It's different than Vue.js. This is special options. We're going to go over async data a little bit later, but let's look at middleware first. So if we go back to our application here, now if we type in Taylor Swift, we still see Taylor Swift here. Everything looks fine, but if we go back to search.js, make sure this is saved, make sure ID is saved. We're gonna refresh it. Now we're gonna try again. Okay, now we can see here, hello from results route changed. So now it's picking up our middleware since we changed the params here. One easy also, by the way, so you don't get confused, we can also, instead of putting the context here, we can just put in the name if we put these curly brackets around it. So we can do something called params. We can destructure it. It's an ES6 feature. So now we have params ID. We can change it to change one, two, three. And if we refresh it, um, then we change the name here, one, two, three, four. It's now changed to one, two, three. So it, it's it's taking our params that we sent over and it's changing it. So now that we know that we can use middleware, we want to go and talk to our iTunes. We want to use this searching algorithm. It's really easy, the searching API to do searches. We want to take the information out of that and display it to the user. 
So let's, um, one thing, one limitation of using this middleware here is we don't have access to the DOM. We can't manipulate the DOM and add the data in here. So one common way of, of getting information into our DOM is to pass it into the store and then have the store have the, the Vue.js application basically look at the store and grab the information out. So let's see if we can do that. So once again, we're going to look at the official documentation. It has a whole Vuex store section, and it mentions that you have something called classic mode. That's to activate the store with classic mode. You just create a file called index.js. The other way is the module mode. It's a little bit more complicated, and you have to um, you create different modules. And then there's also there's a few other ways to do it, but we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to do the classic mode. So I'm going to create a new Vuex store, we're going to call it store, or we'll call it index.js. And we're going to just copy and paste it. So we're just going to use the example here, but we're going to make a few modifications to it. So first, we're not going to call it counter, we're going to call it albums. And we're going to have an, we're just going to have an empty array here. And the way for mutations, let's call it add. And if you know a little bit about this, you actually have access to two variables, two arguments, state and payload. So we can do something like this. We can do state.albums equals payload. So that way this does it. Now, I, I did make a video on Vuex. So the way this works, it's Vuex is like a single source of truth in your application. So normally when you have a Vue.js application, you have to, you have props and you have data in all these different components. And to pass that information around, you can use something called props. You can use uh, like an event bus. You can use events, but it's really gets complicated the larger applications you get. So there is ways like Vuex where you can store information in one place and then have all your components talk to it. And just real quickly, there's state, which is kind of like the data in it. There's mutations. This is the way you can manipulate the state. This is kind of like a, a set or setter. There's actually getters too, so you can you can control how information is retrieved from your store. And then finally, you can do actions. And actions are used for asynchronous data, asynchronous flow. So if you have um, asynchronous information, you usually want to use an action. To keep things simple, we're not going to use anything other than a mutation and state. And if you want to learn more information, I would highly recommend watching my video on Vuex. It's really easy. It sounds complicated, but Vuex is a lot easier than you probably expect. So now that we have this in here, we can access the Vuex store inside our middleware. So we can actually add another destructuring variable here called store. And we can do a few things. So first, we remember at the beginning, we uh, had something called Axios. So we're going to actually import it in now. And we can use it. So axios.get. I'm going to put in the URL. I'm going to copy it from my other screen because I don't get it. I don't want to get it wrong. Okay, and we're going to close it. So let's make sure we did this right. So what we're doing here, we want to do that. So what we're going to do is, here is we're using ES6 again. We're going to go to the iTunes API search, which is you can look at the iTunes search and how it works, really simple. Then we're going to pass in the params.id as the term. And we're going to do entity album, that way we only get albums back, so that would be easy. Then we can do something called dot then, it's thenable, this is, a, this is part of the Axios way of doing things. And then when we get it, we can do something with it. So we have this response data. So let's do store.commit. We're going to do the add, which is part of the Vuex mutation that we created. And we're going to take response.data.results. And that's it. So what this is telling us, it's going to take whatever params we send over. We're going to do this Axios get. We're going to send it into this basically really simple API. We're going to get a response back from it, and we're going to commit it into the Vuex store. So, oops, cancel. We're going to save it. And we're going to go back to our app again. 
and we want to see if we can take a look at it. So we're not going to do anything fancy here, but let's see here. So the way we access it is we can do store, and then we can do the name of it. So we know the name of it is albums. So let's see if we this shows up at all. So we're going to put in Taylor Swift. Okay, so we got a message down here that it did get the SSL certificate. But we don't show anything. So what we want to do then is let's see if we can figure out where the store is. Oh, I forgot one thing. I got store.state.albums. So there it is. So you can see here, here's the, here's the whole object, the whole blob, the JSON blob that we're getting back with all the information. So let's try that again. Uh, let's try Jack Johnson. All right, so now here we're getting a big, huge blob of information back. So we're, we're going to go and take that information and actually put it all nicely in a card. But let me show you guys one more thing. We'll do that in the next one. But let's say we don't want to use this store. We don't want to use the store to store our data. We actually want to do it locally here. So we can do that too. So we're going to leave this store out at State Albums here for a second. But instead of doing that, we can use something called async data. And remember before I mentioned if you look at the official documentation and you look at views, it tells you a little bit about this async data. So if you look async data, it talks about that. So the most important key, it can be asynchronous and receives the context as an argument. Please read the async data documents. So sometimes you want to fetch data and pre-render it on the server without using a store. Async data is called every time before loading the component. It's only for a page component. So basically, it's a way we can do um, we can retrieve data like we're retrieving it from this um, from on the server side but we don't have to access the store to pass it into our component here so we can basically do the same thing we can do async data params and then inside here we can do I'm just gonna copy and paste it because it's basically the same thing as here so let's go back to our middleware and copy it edit copy. We're going to go back into our ID here. We're going to paste it. So we're basically doing the same thing we did before with our store here. But this time we're not going to use the store. We're going to actually we can actually uh, put it right to some kind of data. So let's make a new thing here. So instead of this we're going to have a return and we're going to call it album data and we're going to call response.data.results and then we're going to delete this and we're going to put in our album data we're going to save it and to make sure we can use axios we have to import it import axios from axios And let's see what happens. So let's type in Taylor Swift. All right, here it is. Here's our album data that we're getting. Just to make sure that we're doing it right. You see here's reputation. That's the name of her album. We go back. Let's put in Jack Johnson. And let's make sure this is a real version. Put H2 output. Okay, so we're definitely not using our search. This is still running. And it's still committing to the store, but we're actually using the data from our async data right here, which is doing the exact same thing, but now we can have access and create our own variables. You can notice too, I don't have a data object here. I don't have album data, but it still shows up because basically async data is its own type of data. So we have our normal data and we have our async data, which works great. So in our next video, we'll show you guys how to take this data. We'll create one more component called a card, and we'll format it all nicely, and then we'll do a, a couple last-minute things. 
If you guys like this types of videos, please click that subscribe button and please let me know in the comments below what you guys like. Thanks.